jij bent aan zet. Welke stappen zet jij voor de toekomst? Blijf je op bekend terrein? Of ben je een pionier? Welke toekomst creëer jij? Capgemini, get the future you want. Hello and welcome. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, yeah, API first architecture. Um, uh, this is actually very, it's not a new topic. Um, we, we, uh, we are doing this uh, for quite a long time. Uh, it's now API. It used to be web services from the WSDL world. Uh, so we used to create WSDLs. We used to share the WSDL between uh, different clients. And Java.net, everywhere we used to create clients and server stubs uh, to know, you know, uh, uh, reduce the boilerplate code. Um, but it has been evolved in uh, in in last few years uh, quite a lot, and there are standards and things available which can help basically your DevOps team or your your Scrum team to 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 adopt this and work with it quite nicely. Um, before we go ahead, uh, who I am? I my name is Shoham Das Gupta. Uh, uh, I, I I I come from a very beautiful city in India called Kolkata, and and that's not Taj Mahal. This Victoria Memorial, and I live in another beautiful city in in uh, Netherlands, which is Utrecht. Um, uh, I, I I do speak and blog quite regularly. I try to at least. Um, you can find me uh, in all the uh, tech channels, uh, and uh, all the code that I'm going to use today will be also published in uh, my GitHub repository. So I'll share the link at the later on. So without further ado, uh, this is the agenda today. Um, I'm going to talk about the traditional route that most of us follow and uh, how it is differs from uh, the API first approach. Then I'm going to talk about open API specification OAS uh, and then how that we can use to speed up your um, development testing and integration process. Um, I'm going to show you code samples and how to do stuff around it. First of all, API. API is everywhere. If you are doing IT, um, you cannot uh, unhear and not use this in your daily life. Um, it's from beginning to end, uh, nowadays we only talk about APIs. Uh, it has been evolved from a simple API to microservices, uh, bounded context, uh, having sessions, etc., etc., etc. But when we talk about this and when we build something uh, such uh, core of our IT or of our uh, for our clients, we always follow a very traditional route where where uh, where a requirement comes in, the the functional analyst and the business uh, analyst guys sit together, talk through it, decide how many APIs they need, what kind of UI they will build on it, or what kind of other clients will actually uh, try to uh, you know um, uh, call these API, and then it comes to uh, the Scrum team or or uh, or if you're following a waterfall model, the, the architecture team, they will go into it deep, look at the technical aspects of it and define so it's such and such APIs. Then it will go to a development cycle, it will be developed, it will be deployed. Then the testing will come in, check the specs again, do the integration testing, check everything is working fine or not. And then it will go to the other integration side, whether it's an UI or other clients you are. But this adds quite a lot of feedback loops. So if there is something goes wrong in the testing, it comes back to the development and your, your integration side is waiting on it. Or if you are facing some issues in integration, for example, uh, the UI was showing a checkbox. Uh, so it needed a Boolean value back, but it was actually coming back as a string uh, and they didn't really thought about it. So it comes back again so that you can actually put that as a Boolean uh, value in your API response. And this goes on and on. And sometimes the code and development also go back to the requirement or your architecture team uh, to think about how we can better manage the downstream uh, requirements and wishes in a much more structured way. What it brings is longer feedback time. It brings waiting time for everybody, basically. Uh, it it poses a very uh, huge uh, uh, impact on your testing time because it, it comes in a very later phase. It, the specs and the, the uh, integration side has not been tested before you go to deployment. It also introduces integration delay and the developer experience is amazingly bad. So every time after three or four sprints, this person is again doing the same API, changing it from uh, string to Boolean, which is in a, in a in a way pretty frustrating can be for for a developer because he or she has been done that for like three sprints ago. So what 
can we change to make this a better uh, flow? Um, as I said, this is not new. Uh, we are doing this since WSDL, um, but we were doing this in a WSDL area only from the um, uh, server stuff and client stuff way, and it was only bound to the backend code. Um, but API first approach right now looks at the complete picture from, from development to, uh, to testing to integration. And what that brings is that your requirement goes to a design team first, where this design team can be in your waterfall model, the architecture team, or your scrum team itself, where they sit together and define the specifications of this API as the very first step. So they talk about how it will look like. What is the endpoint? Is this an HTTP method that get or a post or a put or a delete? How does my uh, request object will look like? How will it be in the header side? Are there any security applied to these uh, endpoints? What is my response object? What are the types of those response objects and request object you are expecting me to uh, define? And lots of other stuff, the versioning, where it will be deployed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once you have the specs ready, uh, the optional step is you can create a mock out of it. I say optional, but normally if you do the mocking, that makes your life a little bit more easier from the integration and the testing side, because then they can create the test specifications and the integration um, code using that mock itself um, when your code and uh, your development and deployment can go on parallel. So once all of these boilerplate tasks are ready, and your code is also deployed, they can switch over from mock uh, endpoint to the actual endpoint itself. So it brings quite uh, um, the it brings down the feedback loop quite heavily because you are now going back from your design team to requirement if there is any changes. The rest is actually you uh, you talked about it, you decided at the very beginning. So the the biggest gain is feedback time, which was which was a negative point in the first approach. Um, the time to market is very high because you define your APIs and you 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 send it to all of your team who are responsible for testing, integration, and development. Um, uh, so they are all working parallelly. Uh, so the parallel work is very huge. Then you have a clear abstraction of different uh, 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 tasks. So your design team is more. Uh, focused on how to design this properly, the, the, the mocking it properly, and all your other teams are uh, yeah, working on that specification itself. Um, your team efficiency high, and definitely it's going to reduce your cost. Um, so that's more or less the, 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 uh, uh, the approach of doing API first. I, I would like to actually um, have a poll uh, to see if you are using um, API first approach in your uh, project? And if it, yes, then I would like to know. To make it a little bit interactive. I mean, these virtual sessions are so uh, boring. Cool. I think I have more or less a 60, 40 response. Um, cool. Then it should be uh, quite uh, easier for you to understand the concept that I just said. And then let me move on to uh, uh, the second part of it, which is basically the which is basically the the Open API specification. Um, open API specification is also not new. Uh, they say it was earlier known as Swagger, but it is still Swagger. Their 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 uh, logo is still Swagger. Um, so it is Swagger, and and actually they they changed uh, from 3.0 the version. Uh, they change it and they call it Open API specification, and they define the standard of defining uh, REST APIs. Uh, it is a language agnostic way to define how you um, how you how you uh, design your APIs and how you how you publish your APIs. Um, I'm going to show you how it all works out and how it looks like. Um, it um, Open API gives you four different ways actually to to work or create your API. 
Um, one is an online version. There is an editor.swagger.io. I'm going to show you that in a bit. Uh, there is an NPM module. You actually can. Uh, it's an open source thing. You can you can you can install it and you can run it locally. So it'll it'll basically pop up this editor swagger.io locally on your uh, laptop, and you can actually work there. Um, there is a Docker module also available. So if you are not really interested in doing all these NPM installation on your laptop, you can actually run it via a Docker module. So the Docker will host your uh, Swagger editor. And there is a last one, which is actually a cloud version of it, is the Swagger Hub. Um, um, I'm going to show you that as well uh, in a bit. Uh, let's see. Where is my browser? There is it. So this is editor.swagger.io. Um, on the left hand side, it, it gives you an, a YAML or a JSON way of defining your APIs. Uh, uh, this is a YAML way to define it. Um, I don't like a lot of uh, curly braces around it. Much easier to read, so I converted it to a YAML. But if you are if you are not really um, interested to do this, you can actually convert this to a, 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 a JSON as well if you want. What you get on the right hand side is what you define. So um, uh, the the APIs you have, what kind of uh, HTTP method it is, um, what kind of parameters you have to put, what kind of uh, responses you expect. So you can also define your example responses inside your uh, API definition. Also, you can define all your um, uh, error codes, uh, which can be generated from it. Um, it also has a Swagger Hub version. Uh, let me see. Swagger Hub. It's a little bit slow. The Swagger Hub actually have, uh, it is a uh, paid version. So the free version, you do not have all uh, uh, all the facilities that the paid version gives you. If you check in their tools, um, you will actually see that, that there's a difference in how to, what are the different aspects of it and how, how much do you pay for it? What is the difference about it? But um, it gives you um, ways to similar ways to define your uh, APIs and and check what it is actually looks like. It gives you some extra feature of exporting it, sharing it, and also generating code for it. Uh, it gives you a dashboard where you can define more than uh, yeah multiple APIs, and you can link them with your GitHub repository. Uh, so any change you do, it can actually uh, it actually syncs to your GitHub repository at the backend. Um, that feature you never get in the, the 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 online version or the Docker module version, where you really need to copy paste your uh, you know the definition to your YAML file and self do the check in. Um, before I go into the next slide, I have another uh, question actually. Uh, let me see. How can I open that poll? Um, are you familiar with uh, Swagger? Oh yeah, sixty forty is on a yes side. Uh, people uh, using it uh, open uh, API first approach on a yes side, sixty and no side now. Okay, so a lot of people are familiar with uh, Swagger. Ninety percent are familiar with Swagger. I'm quite glad that you are, uh, because that gives gives me much more uh, easiness to explain the next uh, uh, section of it. And I don't think I have to go in much deeper about it. Um, so if you see uh, the first line, it defines um, what is basically. Uh, um, uh, the the version of your APIs right now it is on 303 if I'm not wrong yeah it is on 303 um, uh, I defined it on 300 uh, so that's that's not really an issue as such um, and then you define an info area where you have your title description your contact definitions and um, where you get the license uh, part of it 
You also define your servers. This is quite important when you're doing a mocking and when you have an actual environment, you can actually put multiple servers there. So your mocking server, your development, your test, and your production or <coughs> acceptance, excuse me. So when people are consuming it, they can choose which servers they want to consume it. And, and the Swagger API also, the, the UI also gives you to test your APIs from here. So you can choose which server you want to call to test your APIs. Um, there are tags available. I highly recommend you use this. Um, I, I was not really convinced. One of my uh, colleagues from our project, uh, he convinced me to use it because it, it actually gives you much more visibility to uh, see how your APIs are segregated. So when you're defining one YAML file for your particular microservice or, or um, service, uh, it might have multiple endpoints. So your API has to be segregated somehow for easiness of read. And later on, you can also use these tags to generate uh, or control the generation of your uh, code later on. Um, I, I might show you uh, uh, that later on as well. Then comes a path section where you define a endpoint or a path, and then you define the the uh, basically the uh, the HTTP method, and then what kind of response you expect, and if it is a post or a put, what kind of request body you expect. Um, you see here is a ref. Uh, since you are quite familiar with it, the, the ref is basically a, a component which we define uh, somewhere at the end of uh, the YAML file. So these are basically, uh, think of it, your model definitions. Uh, so these are the objects that will be uh, used by uh, your APIs as a request and a response. Um, you can define your request response objects. You can define your error objects. You can define your security objects. Everything is possible to do that here. Um, and also, it makes you easier to reuse it. So your endpoints are reusing all of your uh, uh, um, things as well. Um, you also use uh, operation ID here. Uh, it's quite important because uh, when I'm going to show you the generation, this operation ID plays a very important role um, uh, because this operation ID will be used to define your controller uh, method. So I'm going to generate a, um, a Spring Boot uh, server uh, uh, with this uh, specification. And you will see all of these operation ID are used as this controller method name, basically. So um, make sure you use this as a unique one so that your, your API doesn't. And by the way, um, uh, when I say make sure, you can also validate your open UI, your YAML definitions using uh, the open UI CLI. That I'm going to show you a little bit as well. Um, so I am not going to spend more time on this anymore because 90% of you are quite familiar with it. But on a gist, YAML defines uh, or JSON defines your API specifications. Um, you have all your endpoints with your response request objects, your error definition, your um, uh, and your your uh, yeah stop definitions as well. Um, one nice thing I'm going to show you at the very uh, last about the the Swagger Hub. So if I want to create a new one API in Swagger Hub, it asks me for a template. Um, at the very end, I'm going to talk about how you should adopt or how you how I think you should be adopting uh, the open API specification or contract first approach or API first approach to your project. Uh, one of the step is define your styles and the defining styles is defining your template. Uh, the template tells you which all common objects are there and what kind of things that your client kind of imposes on your API definition. Like you always need to have a tag or you always have to have a same error object coming back or a different uh, a set of error codes that you need to always use or a security level um, uh, restrictions that you are always using OAuth with a specific uh, key and value pairs. Uh, so that actually um, you can use in your template. And uh, let's say if I do that and make it a visible public, it'll create the API for me. So the, the Swagger Hub is quite powerful in here. And in that respect, that you, it gives you a, 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 a skeleton of your API from the template itself. And you can do that with, with the NPM and the Docker module. Um, um, so that, that's uh, one of the good part about uh, Swagger Hub. Um, moving on. Um, so I talked about this. Uh, you have info, you have servers, you have tags, you have paths, define all your endpoints, you have components, defining your response error 
request objects. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the documentation is very handy and very well written. Um, so I, I, I ask you to do check it out. Uh, if you type in open API specification, you'll land up here and you have all the, the, the stuff to read about and, 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 and uh, learn about how you can actually use this in your project. If you are not familiar, the 20% who said no. So um, now the, the part about open API generator, now that you have the specification, remember I showed you the, the flow where you have a, uh, requirement, then it comes to the design team where you actually design and mock it. So let's say that part is over. Now what? Uh, I was saying that everybody can start working parallelly, but how will they work parallelly? Um, there comes it, uh, the, the, the part rule of open API generator. Um, open API generator, by the way, is not part of open API specifications. They say that in their uh, GitHub repository quite clearly. Um, open API generate open API specification. The Swagger Hub also gives you some kind of generation of code, um, but that's very static because you have to do that on their uh, UI itself, and then you get a download of the code. Then you can use it inside your uh, actual code base. But open API generator gives you a, a much more flexible way to uh, generate and use your code. Um, there are different ways to use it. Uh, you can use uh, Maven plugin. You can use Gradle plugin. You can use Cake, SBT, and Basel as well. Um, uh, the right side, you see the number of clients they support, uh, starting from CC hash to Angular, OpenScript, Object C, REST client, Kotlin, you name it, they have it. Uh, they have also server stuffs available for almost all languages, uh, from CC hash to uh, Node.js, Java, Spring Boot. Um, I'm going to show you the server stuff of Spring Boot. I'm going to show you an API client of Angular. I'm going to show you an API client of uh, Native. Um, and I'm going to show you the CLI part as well. Uh, the CLI is quite important, uh, well, quite handy, to be honest, um, because when it comes to generation, um, it's very customizable. Um, when I say very customizable, read as you have 20 parameters to uh, play around with. So when you, uh, um, you need to really know what you want to use to generate the code as such, but it's 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 not so complicated. One or two tries, it'll give you a, a code itself. And I'm going to show you how you can um, uh, use the code generation without passing any parameters as well. So you see the API documentation. I'm going to show that part a bit. Um, Uh, open API list. Is it, by the way, readable? I'm going to look at the chat very quickly. If you're saying no, OK, I see a lot of thumbs up. So OK. If not, um, uh, Stein told me that you can put it in full screen mode, uh, and then it becomes bigger for you. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it up to you what, what suits you better. So. Um, this is a CLI. Um, uh, the list command tells you which all clients and server stops, documentation, schema, and everything you can uh, use to generate this. Um, so I have a small uh, uh, open API YAML file here, the one I was showing uh, uh, just a minute ago in the editor. Um, you see, this is the same thing with this, all the components and all the endpoints here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to generate a documentation. I've never done this before, so I hope the demo gods are with me today. Generator minus i is my file. Minus g is what I want to generate. So let's say I'm going to generate an HTML. Hello. Oh, it's not generator. OK, sorry. Let me see. Uh, come on. Generators. So OK, so it's a nice, uh, actually, bridge. So this is the website of the open API generator that I'm right now talking about. Uh, they also have a very extensive uh, 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 way of uh, defining everything. So the, 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 the documentation is quite, quite, quite nice. So generation, generation, generation. Generate. Oh, 
Whoa. Okay, sorry. There you go. So I just now generated something, which is an index HTML. Let me see how that is. Where is so? So it generated an HTML with uh, zero CSS in it. Um, so probably I have to use some more additional properties to make it uh, useful for me. Um, uh, but this is how easily you can generate it. And and if you if you really want to know um, the the different properties the HTML gives you, you can try config help with the minus G and the the the, the language or or the thing that you want to generate, and it will give you back all the all the uh, options that you have to make it beautiful for you, basically. Um, it's very uh, useful um, that I can also generate, I think MySQL is one of the schema, MySQL schema. So I'm gonna generate MySQL schema as well. What this gives you all the, uh, the files that are needed for your uh, database to set up. So you have a provider, you have a service, and, and you basically can add your schema directly. So you can also generate your um, uh, your schemas file from, from uh, this open uh, API CLI. It's quite handy. Um, uh, even though you're using the Maven node or any other way of uh, integrating it, um, uh, this gives you the very uh, useful information of how to use different additional properties, what are they used for, and you actually can play around with a bit to know what exactly your um, uh, your uh, settings, actual settings are. Um, so I find it quite handy, and um, uh, and I do suggest if you are using this, uh, check it out as well. Um, then I'm going to show you uh, the servers and the clients. So first, I'm going to show you the server. Uh, this is a simple um, uh, Spring Boot application. Um, I have uh, a repository. I have a couple of repositories. Uh, I have uh, some service classes. Um, and they are connected to an um, in-memory H2 database. And the magic happens um, here. So I'm going to make it a presentation mode. I hope it will be readable for everyone. I don't know why my laptop is slow today, but I am using the Open API Generator Maven plugin uh, to generate the Spring server. Uh, the generator name is Spring, so you specify which uh, generation you want. You, you specify where to find your YAML file. Um, you specify some other properties like where to create the model and the, the API packages. You can also specify um, whether you want to use the delegate pattern. I use it because I find it quite useful, but yeah, it's up to you. Um, the Java 8 uh, specification is for your, your date time classes. Um, it is not about the language specification, the, the code will be generated. And uh, it'll, it'll, generate, uh, it, it'll generate your code if you do a, a clean compile. Um, and it will generate in your generated sources. And you can refer from there directly. Um, so if I go back to a non-presenter mode, and run clean compile, it will generate all the code. So uh, it is running now the plugin. And once it is done, which is pretty slow, I really need to see what is making this all so slow. So once, it's, once it is done, it creates the model classes basically with all the definitions, what is the JSON property, what is the 
proper uh, data type for it. And it also creates the API. Uh, there'll be one interface and uh, two classes per uh, endpoint. Um, uh, and um, you basically need to, uh, when you open it, it already tells you from, from the, the um, from the annotations and the definition itself that what you want to implement. Uh, so for for my side, I actually created a service class, a annotated class, which is implementing the delegate class. And the delegate class actually defines all your endpoints. Uh, and the controller is also generated for you. So I'm not going to uh, create, generate, or uh, write the controller. So what I'm focusing on, what your developer is focusing on, is writing the actual code for it. So how to get the data, how to process the data, and how to send it back. The the, the everything else is actually generated for you and matched via this Maven, uh, Maven plugin. So if I run this, um, hopefully it, it it brings it a little bit faster. I really hate this to be slow. because the server needs to run for me to show you the client codes. So when it is running, I'm going to show you quickly the, the Open API client. Uh, the Open API client is also quite similar. So let me sh show you in the presentation mode. So it also has a, uh, has a Maven plugin, which is pretty similar with a little bit different options. So it is still generating, but it's now generating a Java, and it is only generating the the um, uh, the, the model classes and 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 the client that is needed to um, call your API. Um, and once you use this, once you use this, the similar thing happens, uh, and it generates all your code inside your your target folder and uh, if you see ah, where is it API ah, sorry, sorry so if you see it's already generated the class that you can use to call your apis and if you have a security applied to it if you have specific uh, custom stuff doing in your endpoint all will be generated for you and what it gives you at the end is write a very small two lines of code actually application on an on a startup event i am actually calling the provider api which has an id3 so if i is my service running oh service is running so if i run this i probably get the 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 call done to this api which is hosted locally for example now and uh, what you did to integrate the API or to call this API is write one line of code. The rest has been taken care of the open, uh, by the open API generator itself. Um, as I said previously, there are different API clients available. So it is not only Java. So if you have a, 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 a C hash client running somewhere, you can also actually uh, generate your code for that uh, client itself. I'm going to show you the Angular as well um, as soon as I this client runs properly. So as you see, it, it calls it, it also has a two string method automatically added, which shows me that the API three, uh, the provider three has a name and description like this. So that is for the API client. Let me show you the front end. Um, here, I have to actually give a special thanks to one of my colleagues, Stefan. Um, he helped me actually uh, preparing all the content and code. And um, um, the, the, the way uh, the Open API generator is integrated in this is, is quite, uh, quite a cool way, actually. Um, um, I'm going to show you uh, the package.json of this. Um, you can use the CLI in line as a as a npm uh, run command uh, to generate your api uh, generate your client um, it it you need to specify as i was saying with minus g which type of uh, client you are actually um, generating with some additional properties um, but there is another way to do it as well 
But before I go there, I'm going to show you uh, what this does. So when I run this generate API, it's basically creates a API folder inside my source directory and create all the clients there. Um, the reason I'm going to show you is uh, because it also creates the readme for you. Um, and when you generate this code, the readme tells you how you can consume that code, um, which is uh, pretty uh, nice in itself because you don't need to go through find blogs or or some other stuff to know what's what's how you're gonna use this. Where is my API? Come on. Wow, my laptop is so slow. Really? Okay, then I have to rely on the node module. Or, let me see. Come on. Oh, oh. See, there is an API. So Ron, I don't want to hurry you, but you are still uh, well around four minutes left or so. Oops. <laughs> so uh, it also generates thank you. Um, it also generates a readme file for you, which you actually can um, use to check out how you can uh, consume this. It tells you um, how to consume this, how to how, how to publish it, and how to um, use it within your uh, API or within your uh, project. Um, which you can also do is uh, which which uh, Stefan did for uh, our project as well is create a small script which will bundle it for you and add it as a library in your um, project itself. And then it will live inside your uh, lib directory and you can actually from package.json directly um, um, uh, use it. So you don't need to generate every time your code. Um, so if yeah. Within these four minutes, till that starts up, um, I'm going to show you the regression test part as well. Uh, so um, it's quite common that you have um, uh, regression test sets running in your uh, uh, project where you define cucumber scenarios. Um, if they, this happen, given this, when this, you expect that. Uh, that is also quite uh, useful with the generator. So here also I uh, generate um, uh, a, a, a native package for the client API. And in the regression, basically what I use is one line of code. Uh, yeah, basically two lines of code to invoke that. So um, the boilerplate code is actually uh, bring down to completely zero in this case. Um, well, let me see if my uh, UI is uh, up and running. No, UI is taking a lot of time. Last but not least is Postman. Um, so for example, you have, um, if you are if you are used to checking your um, you are testing your API using Postman. Um, you can also actually import the YAML file completely and it will create the collection for you um, with all the all the uh, different URLs, different uh, uh, yeah um, parameters within it. Since I have very little time left and my laptop is not working with me today, I'm going to move on to my presentation. 
these all codes are in GitHub, so you can uh, take a look at it uh, uh, when you spare time. Um, last is how you adopt it. Uh, so there are three different ways to adopt Open API Generator. One is a GitHub way. Uh, so you have created a repository where you store all of your APIs and contracts. And then all the other uh, consumers, your server, client, UI, testing, uh, consume that as a submodule. So you add them as a JIT submodule. And then uh, whenever there is a change, they can update the submodule and they have the latest change. Uh, the second way they, they say it is a Maven way. So you generate your client, your server, um, add that as a dependency to your server or client and use it from there onwards. Uh, the third part is if you are not doing Java, the Node.js way, where you actually generate the stub, package it, and um, npm install it. So you, you refer it from your package.json. The third defined way or the fourth defined way is a Docker. So you host the, the Swagger UI in a Docker container, expose that, uh, let the Swagger UI generate the code for you, and then you download that from it. So the, the, the picture you see here is actually generating a Ruby code uh, and downloading it another with another HTTP code. Uh, who is using it? Quite a lot of people. Uh, you can check it out in their, uh, uh, in their uh, website. Um, uh, it's a big list, uh, and there are some very huge names about it. Since I'm running out of time, I'm not going to go into this, uh, but Swagger has a very nice... Um, Swagger has a very nice uh, blog about how you can uh, uh, approach the API first. And there are different steps you can follow um, to actually plan your API first program. So how you, you establish stakeholders, define your styles, uh, implement the governance, uh, and create a portfolio. Um, I do suggest um, uh, read about it um, uh, if you are planning to do it since uh, Forty percent of us is not using this, so I definitely want to. If you want to start about it, definitely the place to start and read about how you get everybody on board on this kind of a, a scenario. With that, I have a uh, my presentation is over. You have talent. You have idealen. You are on set. Welke stappen zet jij voor de toekomst? Blijf je op bekend terrein? Of ben je een pionier? Volg jij anderen? Of word je zelf expert? Blijft het bij idealen? Of maak jij dromen waar? Score jezelf? Of win je als team? Welke toekomst creëer jij? Capgemini. Get the future you want.